food I can say I'm so I'm going to do the project. Uh, you know when you think about water, one thing I've thought about a lot the last couple of years, I've gone to G and E water I don't think I mentioned one and read the go because I'm gonna be learning something you want to be bound to say. But when you look at the water, of all the water we got around, it's in place now and it's helping our people economy here in Southeast Oklahoma. I talked to Todd back there at the International Paper. International Paper wouldn't be bad in Oklahoma today because it wouldn't have water and nine great plays. You just can't run it without it. Great <laughs> development up around Broken Bow Lake and all the cabins that, uh, that uh, Mr. Seals talked about and, and other people, it, they would be there today if it wasn't for Broken Bow Lake. And then when you look at the, uh, you know, over my district, uh, the power plant at Western, Western Farmers on Highway 6 is about four towns, and those state or eight jobs would be there today. Water to use old lake to, to, to use the generator. So, all that's in place, you know. So, we're always worried about bringing more industry in. We've got more development we do with the water we have. So we've got a way to go on that. As far as when you look down the road and what's going to happen with water, there, we're just starting this fight, I think. I think there's still going to be a lot of things to take place. But one thing that's happened you know, recently, uh, in the last year or so, is Well, we went and argued that Senator Ellis was there and other people, and, and we made our case, and the uh, Water Resource Board voted 72 against us. One thing I don't think was considered there, and I made that point hard, but I'll go quick for Senator Craig, was uh, year after year I had a bill that dealt with selling state property, and we beat that up a little bit. So to sell state property, you had to uh, have three appraisals. Uh, it had to bring 80% of what it's worth. It had to be a little study done to a government agency that said, we did the state, do we need to sell a property? It was a good quality too. Well, Sardis Lake sold for about 25, 26, 27 million dollars in that range. But during the water study that came up, a guy before went to Deer Talk, and, uh, and I said, well, how much would it cost to build a full lake now? And he said, well, I don't really know. We had a system there, they talked for a few seconds. Well, we figured about two thousand dollars per acre foot. Well, I don't know if my man is right, but to take one hundred thirty thousand acres and change hands, water acres times two thousand dollars, that's two hundred sixty million dollars. Well, one hundred thirty thousand acres went to Sardis Lake for twenty-five or twenty, or went to Oklahoma City for twenty-five or twenty-six million dollars. That's the thing that concerns. Me. That's the thing we have to watch out for. So, I think by Talking about it, you know, I know we do the same thing time and time again. I've heard everybody's argument here once before, but every time there's always something new comes up. In closing, I'll, I'll talk about meetings. I'll say one of my talk talk friends told me one time we'd have a meeting. He said, Rick said, my ancestors used to have water, uh, have rain dances and make it rain. He said, it never made it rain, but made the Indians feel better. So maybe we'll do something that just feel a bit better, maybe we'll make some progress. So, thanks, man. <laughs> We're on trial here today, people. The future of southeastern Oklahoma is on trial. This is our jury. These people right here, the people at the legislature, will be the ones to decide our future. And yet, how are they going to decide that? Well, we talk about the water board coming up with this study. One to introduce J.D. Strong. He's here today with us. He's the head of the executive director of the Water Resources Board. We need to talk to him after this meeting, express the concerns to him, too. But during this study, I've heard it said that we went around the state and we lived with the people. But I'll tell you, that's not necessarily true. Yeah, you did have the meetings around the state, but you did not listen to the people. At the regional meeting in McCaskill, there were several of us there. And we broke off in our focus groups, and we came back and said, here's what we're concerned about. Oh, we're not going to put that in the study. That's what the facility has told us, these studies. So how can we have a comprehensive water plan when you didn't listen to the people? 
I agree with Bob Jackman here when he says you had a focus already established to sell the water. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about economic development of the water. <coughs> Oklahoma City wants our water. Why do they want it? This young man here said, we've got plenty of water. Why do you think they want the water? <coughs> they want it to create industry, to create jobs. They don't want it to drink. Now, if we send that water down to Texas like you're advocating to get a little money off of it, where do we have water to create jobs with? We don't. So why do we need more money? We don't have any jobs. We don't have any people here because they moved to Dallas and Oklahoma City from the jobs. So tell me why we want to sell our water and sell our future somewhere else. I think you're wrong. Amen. I'll tell you a quick example. I was in Edmond preaching about this. And a young man said to me, we all need that water down in southeast Oklahoma. We already have a bunch of kids on welfare. That's what he said. And that's the way people in Oklahoma City have a tendency to view us in southeast Oklahoma. And yeah, we do have a higher percentage of unemployment. We do have more people on public assistance. But you say you're short on your budgets. What better way to get more money in the state coffers than to help us utilize this one resource that we have to create jobs and get these people off the public assistance? Keep our water here to create these jobs so we are not on public assistance, so the state has more money to use on the roads and on the schools and on other things. Oklahoma City, they don't want this water to drink. Uh, I think you mentioned something about a picture of Jerry Ellis and, and uh, Rennick River. They were actually the Congress River on June the 27th, and the river was dry. That same day, I was in Oklahoma City, and I took a picture of water running down the street, running into the gutter. Because the people in Nickel Hill think they deserve a green yard. They think they deserve pretty flowers at the expense of the people in Southeast Oklahoma. Oklahoma City has seven lakes and an aquifer 